So we'll get started right away. So Dreambox Learning. Uh, myself, I'm Ian McLean. I'm an instructional program leader with the Halton District School Board. Uh, Technology enhanced learning is one of my main portfolios, but I'm on the mathematics team as well. And I'm Lisa Pilgrim. I'm also an instructional program leader at the board, and I also do technology enhanced learning <laughs> as well as math and occasionally innovation. Awesome. So we're going to talk today about Dreambox Learning, um, and we want to kind of give you a snapshot of what it is and then also allow you guys to get in and see from your own eyes what the students experience as well and then also maybe some supports that you can look at at home okay so overall like why dreambox so we chose dreambox um, in comparison to some of the other programs you may have heard of some of the other programs dreambox why we chose dreambox though is we felt it aligned really well with our direction of math at Alton and we like that it uses models to represent thinking as opposed to just getting answers right or wrong. And we're going to get more deep into what Dreambox does in regards to algorithms, how there's not one set path at all. Or some of the competitors, it actually was that way. That I would get the question, get it right, move on to the next question. Lisa, if she logged in, she'd have that same sequence. Same question, move on. For, sorry, if it's not wrong, if it's wrong, try another one, then move on. The sequence was very, very predetermined. Um, where Dreambox is not. And Dreambox instead gives a pre-assessment at the very beginning, the first 60 minutes um, in duration that a student logs in, it's assessing, it throws a lot of different concepts and things at the student to see where are they, and then it knows exactly where they are, if they're far ahead or if they're below or right on pace, and it then gives them structured lessons to move them forward from their level, which is amazing for us. So that's the intelligent and adaptive learning piece. I think there's a video here to share with you. But that's why we chose as educators. Box. As educators, we know that every student comes to class with a different level of math ability. Yet we teach a single process to an entire class at the same time. To give the best possible education to my kids, we actually need a teaching assistant for every student. We looked for math software to help. I found that many programs took a typical lesson and just converted it to a digital textbook. Another claimed to be adaptive, but all it did was move students faster or slower through the exact same lessons. But one, one was a revolutionary change. True adaptive learning. Dreambox is the only program designed with an intelligent adaptive learning engine. It starts helping students immediately and continuously assesses exactly where students are and adapts to how they learn in real time. Dreambox measures how students are thinking within the lessons, constantly individualizing what each student sees next. In fact, as a single student works on Dreambox for one minute, the program collects, analyzes, and responds to over 800 pieces of information about that student and how they learn. That's 48,000 pieces of data every hour. <coughs> providing the most personalized learning experience possible. The results are amazing. The kids love it. They think Dreambox looks like a game. I think it looks like a teaching assistant for every student. A teaching assistant with infinite patience, unlimited data, and a perfect memory. With the help of Dreambox, I can give each of my students the education they deserve. It's time to learn more. Start now. So that video basically was trying to give you an idea of what they mean by intelligent and adaptive learning. It means that it's measuring all kinds of stuff. It's going to be measuring how many errors are made, how fast somebody's doing, but more significantly, what type of errors are made. Students don't just randomly make mistakes. They normally make a mistake that's based on they have an assumption that's incorrect. So think about people who, for example, you know when you multiply and you line everything up because you're lining up with the ones column? You know how you have some students who will start by lining it up based on whatever the biggest number is and move forward? Well, that gives you the same type of mistake every single time. So Dreambox has the background to say, wait a second, this is what this kid is doing. I need to be able to be doing this. So it's a very, very powerful, personalized program. And that's why we really like it in Halton. Now there's other programs that are out there that are gamified and they're fun and maybe the students get more enjoyment out of them. 
But I know that when I watch my kid decide what kind of avatar she's going to have because she's got that many questions right, that's not the same depth of learning as what you're going to get over here with Dreambox, which is why we made the decision. It's a powerful, powerful education tool. So this is their actual quote. And so the, the key piece is here that it provides the right next lesson at the right level of difficulty at the right time. So the learning doesn't move too fast or too slow. Um, and then to further that, some of the other programs will ask, what is 5 plus 2? And so if a student puts the answer in of 7, they move on. But in Dreambox, it's what is 2 plus 5 or 5 plus 2, and they have to use manipulatives to show it. So how does Dreambox know it's different? Well, if a student does this, and you tell me if this is different, they say 5 plus 2, they all of a sudden say, well, I know it's 5, and then 1, 2 more. Does that show you something about the student versus a student who says it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Are those two students thinking differently? Very much so. The other programs, they don't care. They just look for that answer. Where Dreambox, it looks at how you answer. So if you added 5 and then 2 more, it shows that you understand the concept of 5. If you're still answering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you don't understand the group of five. So Dreambox is going to deliver lessons to show you how to understand five, that it's five and however many more, and then into 10 and into 20. And that's where, thankfully, Lisa put this up to say, these are the models that we're using in our classrooms. These are available for students in the classroom. They're also available online through Dreambox. They're using the same models that they're using in the classroom. So my example there is it's a five and two more. What we want the students to learn is that that's full of five. After five, you add on. You don't have to start at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But other programs don't focus on that. They just focus on the answer. And that's okay because sometimes, to Lisa's point, they're a lot funner because there's like dragons and so on and so forth <laughs> that they get to play against. We get it, and we want them to have fun with it. Dreambox is very gamified as well, yet there is that underlying piece of it where it's a lesson that they're learning, okay? It's pushing their learning. And sometimes students get very frustrated with it because it gets them right at that level what they don't know, okay? And so. I think another important thing to bring up is the integration within the other core things happening in Halton. And so in Halton, one of the other things that's really big are number talks or context for learning kids. So in number talks, one of the, some of the stuff that kids are working on is they're working on some of these strategies. They're working on what is splitting. What are partial products? Things like that. Splitting means that if I want to, uh, say I want to um, add 15, 16 plus 5. Some of you will do 15 plus 5 and one more. You split the 16 into 15 and 1 to make it easier. Look, I see nodding. That's awesome. I picked a question. You're answering my way. So Dreambox is doing the same thing. It's supporting the same thing. So in number talks, the strategies that we're doing aligns with what we're doing in Dreambox as well, as well as another resource we have, which are Context for Learning Kits, which are problems. And so this is a great seamless integration. So the kids are really doing this stuff if they're doing Dreambox at home that they're doing in the classroom, or if they're doing Dreambox in the classroom that they're doing at other points in the classroom. It may look different. There's going to be online versions of the models, but it's all the same stuff so it can continue to support and build forward. And that's really powerful to have these different types of experiences to really root that foundational knowledge. Yeah, and so Dreambox right now focuses on number sense, number sense only. We have had parents and teachers ask for, we want Dreambox for geometry, we want Dreambox for you know, patterning and algebra. The reason it focuses on number sense is that number sense is the most important and it goes through all the other strands. That understanding and being flexible and my thinking with number is a really good place as a mathematician. Then I can start to play with the numbers and see them differently versus just knowing procedures. Like I know that I have to borrow from the neighbor and go through and I know procedurally how to do 100 questions. But then when I'm given it, to, given it in a different situation, I don't know how to solve it all of a sudden. We want them to be able to internalize numbers and see them all differently. So this is what Dreambox is and is not. Uh, I'll first start with the is not because it's not the math program. The teacher is still far superior. 
to any program. It's just a really great addition onto what's currently happening in the classrooms. Um, but what it is, it's an adaptive learning tool. Um, it's a tool to help develop, develop algebraic reasoning as well as number sense. And it's a tool to help student thinking visual through the use of models. So showing again, if they have that wreck and wreck, which was a picture there, I added five, they slide it over, and two more. Now they're making their thinking visible. Mm -hmm. When I learned about numbers, it was just numbers. Mm -hmm. Five was the number five. Eleven was just one more than ten. Like, I didn't really understand eleven. Like, I didn't think of it as, like, six and five and so on and so forth. I just thought of it as one more than ten, and that was it, because it was a number. Where now we're utilizing models so they can visualize the numbers. So in their mind, they think of different visualizations to help them add. And then it's also not a customizable tutor. We can't just say, okay, we know little Ian needs folks on multiplication. Dreambox, just do multiplication. Because Dreambox is taking all that data that I talked about. It knows the right next steps, okay? Um, and then it's also not human. And one of the things that I love as a teacher when I use Dreambox is that it also, because it makes student thinking visible, somebody's pinging me, um, <laughs> Is that it also helps me as a teacher figure out what that next question is I'm going to ask the student to help advance their learning for it. So if I'm looking at them using Dreambox, and back to Ian's example about counting, and I, they have to add five and seven. If I see them go one, two, three, four, five, so they're doing something online, and then I see them with two more, and then they start at the beginning and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's called counting three times. I know to ask, did you have to count the five? Think about the power of that question because I've watched what they did on Dreambox. The kid might say, no, I already knew it was five. Okay, so for the next question, do you need to count it? Well, that's moving them up through their mathematical understanding. And to Ian's point, if it's just five plus seven, seven, off to the races, slay a dragon, you're not going to actually get that experience as a teacher to ask that question. Now, because Dreambox adjusts its flow, meaning it's adjusting how fast, the types of models, the interface, the numbers it's using, based on what it's doing, it's very, very personalized to what your kid's set is, kid's level is. So as hard as it is for you, try not, if they're using it at home, to do the answers for them. That doesn't mean you can't talk with them about what's happening on Dreambox or be with them to help facilitate their learning out loud, but it does mean you don't want to do the answering for them because then they're going to be putting in an answer that is not at their level necessarily. So you want to think about the questions that you're going to have with your kids. They're going to end up being more about conversations about what they might be doing rather than supporting them getting the right answer. As we do see sometimes at home, when a parent and child sit down together and they go boom, 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 boom through the question, and Dreambox is like, wow, this kid really gets it. They're answering all these questions right. They're answering it really fast. What happens? The questions are going to get harder. So if your kid is getting stuck, doing things like what are you thinking about doing? What are you thinking about trying? Promote them. Give, yeah. give it a whirl. You're not going to break it. That's where they're at. It's okay if they keep getting questions or if they're moving slow. That's fine because Dreambox is going to continue to reinforce that level until they can move forward independently. So it takes some patience. I'm a parent of a young so child right. on Dreambox. Okay. <laughs> and I know what it's like to say to Lily, well, what do you think you're going to do? Well, I think I'm going to move some beats over. Great. How many are you thinking about moving over? She's like, well, 10. How'd you pick 10? Well, because it says 12. So I'm going to move 10 over and then two more. Great, why don't you try that? And sometimes, yes, what have you tried already as well? Yeah. Because there's value in what they've done. And sometimes students, do. it's like when we were growing up, you'd erase everything and write again. But there's value in what was erased, you know. And we talked earlier about technology and learning. What we love about that is the fact that, like, that thinking is always there. Even if they delete it, we can get it back and see what path were they on, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so it is kind of parent-proof and big brother, big sister-proof in the fact that if all of a sudden they're knocking it out of the park, they're like, whoa, this, this child's doing really well. And then all of a sudden they're not really answering it as well. Dreambox is smart to go, okay, hold on, let's go back. And what it does consistently is it loops back. 
So if you get some that two plus five, you're like, oh, five and two, they're like, okay, you know that. But then when they bring it up over here, they're like, you used to know that. Let's make sure in this area now that you still know that. Oh, you still do. Now let's keep moving forward. It doesn't just say, hey, you know how to mo multiply, see you later. It goes, great, you know how to multiply, use this. Let's bury that into something else you're doing and check for this and the new thing. And if you're still struggling here, we'll just go right back. But they don't realize it because you'll see in a minute when you get on to play it, they just go through this little learning journey. They're just kind of hopping around, gaining stars. They don't realize that the math is changing in the background. Mm -hmm. So sp speaking about trying in a moment, nice. do you want me to show the interface first or do you want to go right I, into here? I think because we're logged in, we should just go right into the, the dash, like let them get into like the primary and junior dashboard and play and then we'll show how we could use it mm -hmm. in the classroom together. So if you go to dreambox.com, which I think most of you already went to when you logged in. There. Oh. I made it a little bolder, so it shows nice. up. I was thinking actually if you skip through, you know how we had the junior and, and That's what I meant by the interface. So. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's let's, where I was wondering. Let's go, let's let them go right in, then we'll talk about it after. Okay. Yep. So I think we should go to, so you're there. Oh, um, so if you just go to uh, resources at the top, and then uh, if you go to teacher tools, and then here you can try any one of these lessons to see what it's like. So you can see all this is free online for you at home too. If you're wondering what some of this math is and whatnot. Um, oh, and then you just got teacher tools. She's on teacher tools. Yeah, and then you just pick any one of those. You click on it, and then once you find one, you hit the plus, and then it says try sample lesson. Yeah, and then any, so that there you just go, sorry, view teacher tool, it says now. There you go. So click that and it's going to launch it. And you go, so okay. it's like in kindergarten. So these are all different activities that you guys did. I was like, I'm feeling good about myself. Right. You know, I was like, ooh, I'm feeling good now. Back on the horse. <laughs> You know? So because we hear about it often, like, what's going on with this new math? It's a different way. I didn't learn so, that way. Yeah, Some of these teacher like tools support you in how to multiply and do things differently that you, we just weren't exposed to, right? Um, so it's great for that, for even your own learning as well. Did that work for you? Right. Um, yeah, so you understand. Because your volume is probably not up, it, it gives you instructions. So sometimes you land and you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That's why in classrooms we have students have headsets on so they can hear the programs as you're at home. If you don't want it loud, uh, have a headset. But I really like when you can hear in the other room if you're making dinner or doing whatever, um, that you can hear the questions they're asking. But you obviously see it's equivalent, so you're playing with it. But you see the models differently than just saying, tell me an equivalent answer, right? You have to manipulate it. And so Dreambox, if you like would take like 25 minutes here, then here, and then here, and there, they're taking all that data. Yeah. And then for yours, oh, you just have to pick the number that you see. So, so the number is that. It's missing one. You're close. Yeah, so. And then it goes. Oh, that one's just. You can't just skip it yet. I just wanted to say that it did, yeah. Yeah, actually, so you, try you keep again getting it wrong, it'll actually pull you into when they're on the dashboard, pulls them into a mini lesson and say, hey, you remember Yeah, it does say. It yeah. slowly directs it that way. It doesn't just <laughs> expect them to yeah, know what they're doing. The thing is there's a little question mark. When the kids press that, it gives them help. It says, oh, hey, this is what you were supposed to do. So if you didn't miss okay. what you were saying, yeah, then you go to the next one. Next yeah, one. and then here it comes again. This would be a fun thing to play with your child. Right? How many do you see? And it's quick. That's to work on a, a concept called subitizing. Or we just know the number that we see based on our counting. <laughs> so we find something. We don't have a flash player. Flash player. I know. Come on. <laughs> we have a flash player on this. Mm -hmm. Try again. Try a different one. And then the view teacher tool. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I think that's the guest thing that's going on. So, oh, yeah, so I am hitting it. I see the I see this uh, practice is uh, uh, rendering this distribution uh, distribution that there is not a system, for example, if I'm there is. all the uh, all the practicing of for example in great uh, so way. There is. This one here we're showing you is all three things. You can just go and learn yourself and go through yourself, like all three for anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but then if you have an, an account that like we're buying it for every grade three and four student this year, mm -hmm. so those students, they actually go in and it looks a little different. I'll show you okay, what it looks so like. Which one are you so trying you to play. Play. I am to the teachers. 
school. Yeah, and it looks like it's a British history. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should be fine. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Should be fine. Looking good. Mm -hmm. So now I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like when they actually. What ages do you have? Yeah. Yeah, you know, one day. Yeah. The flash is just not working, but if you go there, that's how you can try the actual environment. So I'm going to try it over here for you on this one. Mm -hmm. And then, um, And this is not how quiet it usually is in a classroom, just to let you know. You guys are doing really well. Or sometimes we say to students, this is what thinking sounds like. When everyone's thinking, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. Because we're all concentrating, right? Yeah. Versus, oh, I was thinking, like, no, you were talking to think that something different. Um, I'm going to try and get it up here for you. How's that in China? I didn't see many students use Dreambox in China. They use Dreambox in China? No, no, no oh. in seldom. So the, the southern use Dreambox in China. Actually, uh, the, maybe the educational system uh, didn't introduce uh, this kind of uh, information technology in Chinese classroom. Right, but I think there's a whole different way of learning overall in China as well, oh, right? And how they, yeah, and how they approach yeah. learning yeah, as yeah. a whole, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. which is, I think, really good in its own right as well. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Dreambox could help in China as well. I don't know. I don't know if it's different in regards to the way that they learn numbers and how it progresses. Because this whole program is based on like North American standards yeah. for progression of learning now. Mm -hmm. So well, I don't know if that's the same in China or not. Okay. So it looks like the gas line don't have yeah. Yeah, I got one going here though if you want to play I just it. Switched it over. Oh. Did you want to try and see what it looks like for the kids? This is what it looks like for the kids. Oh, like they get stars. And, yeah, this is like, well, no, teachers and anyone in the world can go to these and learn how to do math differently. Um, that's what it looks like when they log in. So you have to go. That's only because, yeah, we gave you the, um, so here, you know what, why don't we just show you quickly, if you go, uh, or if I can do it, just if you guys want to see, because it just gives you experience what a lesson looks like and feels like, and then you can go to those free ones that we showed, that's just dreambox.com teacher tools, and you can just play with that to your heart's desire, or if you have a friend who's never been great at math, you can just kind of send that an email, say, check this out, and try these lessons, but the actual learning environment looks like this, if you go to dreambox.com, and then why dreambox? So if you guys do this, so dreambox.com, why dreambox, and then try dreambox lessons, it launches what the actual full program looks like for students. You can pick the K to two environment, three to five environment is where we are if it's junior, K to two is our primary one. Dreambox learning. Oh, someone really needed the volume. That's oh, me. No, that's up here, sorry. And then you just scroll hey, down. Yeah. down here. Uh, right there. Before we start oh, our adventure, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Stella. So this is what it looks like for the students. This is how the students... Awesome. So, when I think of that, when I was taught, uh, I should uh, add the, this... this uh, the nine in, yeah. In, in, uh, to make it tens, yeah. yeah. To make it tens, so that then the tens. Have all the tens. But he just he used this way, you know. He can yeah. figure around. He can just uh, to have, have a look at the, the that he decided and decide if he needs, for example, this should be fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. That's, so that's have a look at what this is doing. This is an open number line. It's saying, okay, so if we look at eighty-seven. Or 69. What can we do to manipulate these numbers? Well, first thing, we can go to 90. If we take 3 away from here, now that becomes 66, that becomes 90. Is 90 plus 66 easier to look at? 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a lot easier, right? So that's what this asking that was teaching you to do this, but you probably just couldn't hear it. But it's teaching you to say, okay, you don't just want the answer. It's asking you to just make a jump from yeah. where. Are you going to go to 87 and add like 62 and you get to a number, then add 9? Like there's so many different ways. It's so open to learn, right? Yes. And they love celebrating and different ways to learn. Sometimes when Tibetan Chinese study in China, he's met a teacher will not allow a different way. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And Which maybe is hard. She, yeah, she has to listen that she, they force students to form one way. Of and that's only it. That's, yes. what our, that's what we found in education. Yes. What happened is that everyone learned one way, and when they got into a job, yeah. and that one way was a support, it's like they didn't know what to do. Yes. They yes. didn't know. Exactly. That's what I was talking about earlier, the flexibility of numbers. He thought he, he can got the same answer from his way of thinking. Yeah. It's something he, he has to be forced to uh, calculate differently. Yeah, that's a good thing. And you yeah. want to hear the calculations of others, too. You want people to be thinking differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yours got lost in picking a... a st you had to pick something to get in? Oh. I guess you had to pick a character? Just any character, just for now, to show you. Just to get in, and then it should launch. Mm -hmm. you no, know, because you did the primary one. That junior one gets you right in. How old is your child? That you said? One is a decade, one is the second grade. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So second grade, they pick this environment. They say, oh, well, this is incredible. They get all these points. It's, it's really fun for them. Okay. Three and four this year. Yep, of course, supporting every student grade three and four has full access to it. And then as so. far as, like, yeah, like, personally, I have a daughter in JK, but, yeah. um, like, is it something that you can buy a subscription? Or you can, but I think with the, do you see all those free tools and, like, yeah, just yeah. that thing? Like, I would do that for a little bit. Yeah. I have a son of JK now, a son of just in grade one. Yeah. And I do minimal of it. It's just like yeah. pull up the activity, they see it, hey, how many, and we have fun with it, and that's it. At that age, yeah. I think, honestly, the screen time yeah. and what it takes cognitively for their sustained thinking, I just don't think it's healthy. At that age, I want them outside in the dirt, playing, running. I don't want to get them this way yet. But it, no, we're not supporting any kindergarten at all. From, from Halton, no. We just, because our program supports um, that play-based play learning, and we want them to kind of bump into learning versus forcing that learning upon them. Uh, we just don't, like I said earlier, with the grade three or four, it's a great gap filling reason. So if students have struggled over the years, they, this would adopt back all of the kindergarten curriculum. The curriculum's there in the program. Um, make sure the parent reads this. I was just gonna leave that just to give an idea of what yeah. Okay, what time do we finish the session? I always forget. What's that? 2.40? Half an hour. Was oh, it an hour session? Was it one more two forty? Was the other one an hour? Yeah. No, it must go fast. It must go fast. Oh, it was. Wow. Okay, cool. So, how are you guys feeling about experiencing the program? Do you enjoy that? Yeah, it's easy and uh, I enjoy the kids version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. You know what? I uh, true story as well. When I first saw those teacher tools, it's like, oh, I jumped on grade eight. It was yes. like trigonometry or something. Like, cool. It came up, and I'm like, what is that asking me? I shut that down. I went right to kindergarten. It's like, oh, now I feel better about myself. I got to work my way back through. I got my feet under me. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling good about what this is asking. Because, you know, I just didn't learn in that open, flexible way in regards to mathematics. I didn't. I learned very procedural. It was all about procedural fluency. Did you understand the way the procedure worked? And that was it. Which we really don't want to go that way anymore. The procedures are great. Once you understand what's underneath the procedure, the procedure makes sense, right? Um, but we really don't want to just be teaching procedural fluency because then all of a sudden when the numbers don't fit, we don't know what to do. If we don't have a procedure for it, oh no, right? We don't know, so. And, and that's, I think that's a really important point. One of the things that we're trying to shift in Halton is not, do I know the answer, but what am I going to do to find the answer? So think about the difference between those two questions in a kid's head. Do I know the answer? What happens if the kid says no? They're done. They're not going to try it. They're going to leave it blank. They're going to cry in some situations. But that's it. That's not going to help you as you're moving forward. Where with Dreambox and um, math in general in Halton, we're trying to say, so chunk it. Take a step. Use a model. Do a thing. But now it's the, 
I have a ton of things at my disposal that are going to help me. So it's going to be how. Well, I think I'm going to try this first. And then if that doesn't work, they're not like, oh, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like now they're like, okay, that, that particular split didn't work or that's not really a great problem for a rack and rack. Maybe I'm going to try something else. Mm-hmm. And that's really that change of thinking is a huge piece of where we're trying yeah. to go. And I remember seeing a classroom, it was a grade four classroom, we're looking at multiplication, and this student, it was amazing. They didn't understand that procedure multiplication, but what they did understand was repeated addition. And they said, oh my gosh, multiplication is just an easier way to add. And we're like, mm-hmm. yes, like you get it. So now when you're multiplying, think in your mind, it is those repeated additions, but guess what? It's more efficient to be able to group them and multiply. And they're like, oh my gosh. And the other kid's like, wow. <laughs> I would have never known that. I thought we went from addition right into multiplication. That's what you do. You stack it, you carry the zero, and you go through. That's multiplication. Mm-hmm. It's because the numbers are so large that we have to do something. That's kind of what I went through school thinking, right? Mm-hmm. But a student at that age, like, oh, when it's hard, I'm just going to add it. But mm-hmm. when it's like, you know, two plus two plus two plus two, yeah. eventually they go like, this is way too much work. I should just multiply, right? And, yeah. But they stumble upon that themselves, and that's where we get away from that procedural fluids. Right? We had a, a really a nice little experience with a kid not too long ago, and the question was, what's 25 times eight? And the kid said two, no, I mean 200. So the teacher asked, um, when you said two, what, did, what were you thinking? That like great question, because why on earth would 25 times eight be two? Mm-hmm. But here's their answer. Well, it takes four quarters to make a dollar, so eight quarters is two dollars, but wait a second, it's not dollars, it's cents. So that's 200. Look at that, look at, but the speed at which that kid got that question was phenomenal because they were doing something else. So anyways, that was a very interesting moment in time. Yeah, different than what I learned, that's for sure. Sometimes my my, my son, um, who is on grade four, he can't can get the answer from um, from formulas. But it uh, seems that he don't know how he gets the answers. Yeah. Do you think uh, at this, uh, at his age, we should help him to to uh, figure out the whole process of uh, calculating versus the answer to uh, gradually develop the, the ability of um, of knowing the, the, the secret insight. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Insight so is thinking. What, what well, Lisa kind of alluded to it earlier that in Halton, we, uh, in, in our elementary classrooms at least, we're going to have to strategies called number talk and, mm-hmm. and math talks where we're talking about math. Yeah. And where, so if, if your child, the, the teacher, maybe I can let you talk about it further, but the teacher will put a problem up on the board and then all the students take turns in, in answering. Or they come up, they, they put the thumb up and say, oh, I have a solution. Okay, what's your solution? They put it on the board. Anyone else do something similar? Yeah, I was thinking that. Or no, I didn't know it was like that. So I think that will help break that down because he can't just say oh the answer is 12 how do you know I just know well we've been working on all these solutions so what strategy do you so we're building these strategies through open talk with students so that they can see each other's strategy so that's why I said maybe, yeah we can, we can do it. it's not part of our session but this is kind of the way the day's been going we want to make it relevant to you so this is I think a way that this will start to unpack that I hope I hope that's one way to unpack his thinking, but at the same time, it's great that arriving upon it. We just have to now understand how, because it may not be the most efficient, right? Okay, um, I'm going to put a question on the board in a moment, and what I want you to do is, as best as possible, listen to your internal dialogue. What are you doing as you're answering this problem, okay? class and we'd have students put their thumb on their chest if, if you have an answer. If you have two, sometimes they put like two fingers. As opposed to, oh, 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 I know, because what does that do? It takes away all the thinking. Now I don't think anymore because I feel that I'm behind because I don't know as quick. But if everyone's silent and showing what they know, mm-hmm. then everyone has a chance to think because there's various ways to do it. Mm-hmm. So at this point, we're going to assume everyone had their thumb up. Did it, now we would say? Now I would say, does anybody um, have an answer? You would raise your hand and you would sh- share what you think the answer is. Not how you Just get it. the number. Mm-hmm. So what do you believe the answer is? 25. 25. Does anybody have a different sum for this? And this is where, if there was, if somebody had 21, 15, and whatever, mm-hmm. you write them all down. 
And then I'm going to ask this question. How did you get there? So I haven't said anything about the correctness here because one of the things that we know is when you make a mistake but you recognize what the mistake is, your brain's going to grow. If I say no, you're not listening to me anymore. It's done. I've shut you down. So I'm going to say how did we get there? So who would like to volunteer with how did you actually add those two numbers together? I can go. Um... I have to like start with my first number, so it'd be 18, and then I have to go like 19, 20, 21. <laughs> so now. So you, I do it. 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 24, 25. And we're at a place in education now, based on some recent research, that the fingers are the best, one of your best yeah, manipulators. Yeah, like, yeah. we're in a period in education where we're like, put the fingers away, you're still counting. <laughs> oh, no, oh he doesn't time. know math, he's counting his fingers. But control. this could be one, two, three, four, but also this could be 15, 30, yeah. 45. Like, yeah. we don't know what that yeah. truly represents. And guess what? If, if, and I have to say this, why is it like, if we have all our fingers, like, they'll always be there, right? Like, yeah. there's something you can carry with you. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing if your children are counting on their fingers. Not a bad thing. Oh, and the, it actually goes with that you have to, now I have to do the whole progression. So, if we're adding bears, the first thing a kid needs is it needs bears. And it needs to be like one, two, three, and touch the bear. The next level is those could be cubes and you can say those are bears. And now, so now see how we've got one level of abstraction? So they can do one, two, three. The next level is I'm going to point one, two, three, but I'm not actually having to touch them. See how I'm moving? Now my fingers are marking. Then I can look and be like one, two, three. So I don't have to have that one-to-one -one relation. And then when you watch kids, what they do next, tell me if you've seen your kid do this. Yeah. So, and all they're doing is they're literally moving their fingers into the head. So if you take the fingers away too fast, they don't go here. So that's a big deal. Okay. So who did this differently? How did you do this? I add eight and seven. Okay. Eight and seven, and that's uh, 15. And uh, yeah. decomposing. When we showed strategies earlier, you've decomposed it into place value. Mm -hmm. Who did this differently? Mm -hmm. I, did, I did 80 plus 220 and then it's 5. Oh, 20 yeah. plus 5. 25. And that's a different way to split the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Same idea, but just different splitting of the numbers. You're just yeah. taking the two mm -hmm. to build to a friendly number and that's exactly what Dreambox does. It builds those friendly numbers. What are they? And that's our 25s, 50s, 100s, those. And why is that important? Because like we said earlier, this is denominations of money, right? 10s, 5s, 25s. So is there a different way to do it? Anyone do it a different way? I went the same way. Oh, you did the same as, as him? They had the two? So here, look at what Lisa's done, though. If you're a student who started at the top, 18, 19, 20, could you now learn from the way someone else did it? Do you now see and go, oh, that's a different way. We're never going to say that's a better way of doing it ever because it's not. It works yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. It may, when the numbers grow, though, is it still going to work for you? Yeah, it's just going to take a lot longer. Then that's when you start to rely on the different strategies. Yeah. So to your point of your son having the answer right away, that's great. But it's how did you get the answer? Because the how, it could take you a long time yeah. to arrive at that right answer every time when really you can take some shortcuts. So Lisa, and, and I know this looks like a bit of a mess. That there's, it does take a little bit. Like, but if you appreciate kids are going through this year after year after year, people start to see. Oh, wait a second! I heard you say you used the ten out of the eighteen. So I've decomposed the eighteen to the two numbers you said. I heard you say you use the two out of the seven. So I've split it because splitting is breaking a number apart, not based on place value. Decomposing is breaking a number apart based on place value. That's the total difference, and that's it. But what are you doing? You're making something that is more, here comes a big term, cognitively efficient for you. And what we know about mathematicians that are amazing is their cognitive load is lower. 
And it's not lower because they're that good with numbers. It's lower because they can flip through whatever strategy makes that question the easiest for them. So I would say, like, back in, like to Ian's point, if it's like two and two and two and two and two and two and two, is adding two each time easy? Yes, it's easy. Is that a whole lot of work? Yes, that cognitive load's like way up here because you have to be tracking and counting and blah, 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 blah. Where me being like one, two, three, four, five, six, it's six, two, six times two is 12. See how that load is lower. It's not about difficulty, it's about load. So what Dreambox is doing, what Number Talks is doing is giving kids the strategies that by the time they graduate, we're hoping they're asking the question of how do I solve this problem? There's not a right way to do it. You, as adults, functioning adults, all got the right answer. We have three different ways posted on the board. That's what we're hoping that we get more of out there with our students. The students who feel confident that there's not a right way to do it, there's a right way for them at that point in their life. Will they continue to change strategies? Absolutely. And guess what? One of the things that Dreambox is going to do is say, Hey, you do this all the time. Have you tried it like this? And it gives it a little nudge, mm -hmm. just a bit of a nudge, and says, you want to try it this way? Ah, oh, you're not too happy? What if you try with this model? Does this make more sense to you? Because sometimes I do some of these, and sometimes I do the others. Mm -hmm. And it totally depends on the number sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. I make a decision. I was just gonna say, like something of like bigger numbers, I wouldn't do that, right? Like no. I wouldn't count yeah. on because, like you said, <laughs> I don't have enough fingers. Like, yeah, if it was a hundred and eighty yeah. plus seventy, yeah. Yeah. you wouldn't, wouldn't do, do it. No. Right. But what you might do is go yeah. hundred and eighty and seventy. Wait a second, I can you know yeah. shift that by a ten place value. Do yeah. eighteen plus seven, yeah. then count, yeah. and then go back exactly. again. Yeah. But see how you're making a decision based on the context. That's really powerful stuff when students can do that. That's great, high-level, critical thinking. And Dreambox is one of the vehicles we're using to get there. I'm totally on my little mouth soapbox no, right now, fine. aren't I? <laughs> I mean, we just look, though, at like, the different models, right? Like, see how the number line? We didn't say it was right or wrong. We didn't just write, hold on, 18, 19, 20, like that, a long string of numbers. We showed that those were jumps of one because if we were focused on the number line, we could have said, oh, hold on, if I took a larger jump, where could I have gotten to? So to your point, you just didn't take these two. You went like this to get to 20 and then maybe took a jump of five. So they see even within the number line that, oh, look at all those little jumps, or maybe I can start practicing on longer jumps. And that's that mental model that we just did. I didn't learn growing up. Now, right? do you want to see something that our kids are doing that doesn't come natural to our generation? I mean, it's all one generation, okay. by the way, for the moment. You do have a question, though, but. <laughs> Some kids are going to look at the number 18 and say, that's not a friendly number. I don't want to use 18. I actually want to use a number that is three less than 18. Mm -hmm. I want to use 15 instead. And I know the difference between that is three. Mm -hmm. But wait a second, what's three and seven? Yeah. Is that not a, a super easy fact? So as soon as the kids see that, they go, wait a second, now I have to jump forward 10 and now I'm at 25. But 10 plus 25 is a much easier question than 18 plus seven. Those are called related facts. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't come naturally to us, but what we're seeing is the kids who are going through number talks and through dream box, they are way more flexible than what you and I are ever going to be, and I'm pretty darn too good at math. So this is really, look at how powerful that is. Yeah. Kids who can adjust a question. The structure is beautiful. Yeah, and then, yeah. We can even, <laughs> then we can even do like there's the double number line where you can go under the bottom as well to show other, like you can go on both sides of the number line. And a lot of that is in that resource that we shared with you. It has like double open number line stuff. Yeah, go ahead, you have a question. Sorry. Please. Um, because my, my son, when he was young, um, I uh, my, uh, introduced uh, English movies and anim animations to him, but you know he his uh, mother language is Chinese. Yep. So he maybe use a lot of ability of guessing in understanding the right. stories, and that's why he gradually learned English. So I think his uh, guessing ability is strong. So when he uh, faced this kind of equation, uh, he will use a different way. He will guess. 
actually he will guess from the ten because he thinks from left to right mm -hmm. is his way of thinking. So he will start from the from the very left of this number that's from ten, and he found that um, he will take a look at uh, the ones column, and he found both of them are about five, and he will make. Uh, the Tens. number on the 10 column into 2. And then he will add the 2 uh, ones column. Uh, he just uh, figure out the number of the 1 column. 8 of base plus how much 7 more than 10. is 5. Yep. Yeah, that's 5. That will mm -hmm. become 25. Yeah. But later, uh, when he when he learned further, he found that sometimes guessing is not correct. Mm -hmm. It's not accurate. So I, I found that now he has changed the strategy of his learning math. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, good. But that's really good to be adaptive. The other thing that I wanted to take a moment to point out is that, so we call this the standard North American algorithm, not because it was the North Americans who did that, but because we happen to be in North America, mm -hmm. and it's the standard algorithm. But that's not the standard algorithm worldwide. So even though we spend a lot of time talking about the importance of this, mm -hmm. this is not considered standard across the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I do any of the others? Not necessarily, but, um, but this is part of the power of really unpacking. We're understanding in this, we're understanding the importance of place value. That is a huge concept. It goes all the way into decimals really deeply. And under here, we're learning about the efficiency of landmark numbers also really powerful all of us who go around doing estimating so say you go to the store and you've got to buy something you're dealing with really big numbers mm -hmm. how many of us round those into simpler numbers many this many is the skill that sits inside there critical thinking about the how am i going to split a number mm -hmm. so these are big concepts that sit underneath all of our mathematics even if it doesn't look like it does mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Okay, so with Dreambox, we'll get back on the Dreambox path because it sounds like you have children who are using it at this point or maybe going to um, because uh, Halton, again, has supported grade 3 and grade 4, but schools are able, if they choose, to buy for grade 1, 2, and grade 5 if they choose, if they have the means to do it in the technology. Mm -hmm. So if your son or daughter then has Dreambox, we want to show you because we have 10 minutes left. You guys got to see the learning environments. There's two different ones depending on the age. Uh, once they hit a certain level in the math, they move on to a different one regardless. Again though, you could be in grade three and working on kindergarten level math and you would never know the difference because you're just playing the game. You could be in grade three and working on grade seven level math and never know the difference because you're just playing the game. The teacher though gets a dashboard that shows all of the lessons and the completion, the, the standard ideas that are happening within the children as well. But I really wanted to get here because we have 10 minutes. You guys, as a family, you get a dashboard that shows you exactly what your children have been doing on Dreambox. And it even, which is amazing, sends you, when they finish a concept, say like decomposing, they finish that concept, you get an email that says, hey, Ian just finished this amazing concept. It's called, you know, adding by fives. This is what he learned. Here's a game for you to play at home to keep reinforcing the adding by five. It sends that to you in the mail, which is amazing, to your email. So, so um, this Lisa's is going to show you quickly what it looks like, quickly, because we want to make sure we get you signed on to it and show you how to get that happening. So this is my real email, and this is my real kit. This is So I'm showing you my personal information. So um, I am signed up, and I stopped deleting for a little while so I could use it for just this. So you can see... Lily has successfully completed, Lily has successfully completed, Lily has successfully completed. So each time that she had completed a concept, I actually got an email, which was kind of cool. And some of them, if I click onto it, will have something that has like a little download as well that I can have her color in. But the other thing, so and I... Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have it there. Okay. So I've, I've kept this one aside because this is a great example of what you're going to get. She's completed a, a group of Dreambox learning lessons, meaning not just one lesson, but a group that goes together in a concept. And then it explains to you what that concept is. Because Dreambox does not expect all parents who have gone through teacher's college and had a specialist in math and all that sort of thing. So it said it's about adding and subtracting 10. 
So skip counting by children, blah, 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 blah. It gives some example, that sort of thing. But I love this part. Here's a game that gives you an opportunity to talk about the math Lily is learning. It gives her a chance to show you what she knows so you can recognize her progress. So now at home, Dreambox has pumped over, giving me a push notification of here's a game I can do with my child based on what she is doing in math. So I know when I was still in the classroom, one of the homework assignments I used to do was do the game that Dreambox sends you. This is what I wrote. Because it's going to be different for every single kid in the classroom. It's going to be based on what they are doing in Dreambox at that moment, and it should be at their level. But what a great way for you to have a really deep understanding of exactly where your kid's at. It, you don't have to think about it. You just have to do it. So have Lily pick a number, take turns adding time, blah, 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 and so on. And so depending on the frequency of how often they're using Dreambox, this is going to come whether they're using it in school or at home. You're going to get one of these every single time they actually finish a whole sequence. So you, if they're doing it in school but not quite enough that you're getting these, you can add on some minutes at home. But it's a good idea to find out how much time they're spending on Dreambox. An hour over the course of a week, not in one sitting, but over the course of a week, is a great amount of time to help Dreambox continue to progress your student and child forward. Yeah, so we want to, depending on the age, or the grade three and four, uh, each like concept or little lesson group, mm -hmm. like per session, 20 minutes of like sustained concentration is enough. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. We suggest not going on like more than 30 or 40 minutes. So they do get rewards and stuff, and then go spend, change their music. Like they can do that, but the actual sustained cognitive thinking, younger students, it's like 10 minutes. And after that, like that's a lot. Like they're really thinking hard. Oh, yeah. We don't want them on for two hours of this hard, hard thinking after a long day of school. It's just not healthy <laughs> for them. So watch the minutes. But if you can get 60 minutes in per week, that's enough data for Dreambox to move them forward and fill the gaps. If it's 10 minutes one week and then four to the next and then maybe 60 and 70, that's okay too, but try and get that consistent 60. But it's a balance of home and school, especially in grade three and four, because these teachers should be provided with some of the technology to make that happen.